here in the Slemish suite, where usually the PW would gather on the nights that we are meeting, and the chat's usually building as the ladies all come in, and I'm usually up here flapping about with the data projector on the screen, which never does what it's told to do, so I really don't miss having to organise that. But these last six months have been a real challenge to everybody. And our theme last year was Restore, based on Psalm 23. And you know, we did our PW theme on this theme the whole way around from September to March, and didn't God know that we needed that, that we needed this foundation as we went into the pandemic. And it's the same for this theme, because this theme is side by side, and it's based on 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11. And that verse says, encourage one another, build each other up, just as in fact you're doing. And you know, when we meet at PW, we are interested in each other. We ask each other how we're getting on, and if we can help out in other ways. But you know, we're not side by side physically now. But you know, we can be in many other ways. We can do it maybe by texting, or by phoning, or by sending a wee letter, or by calling at somebody's house, socially distanced, and we can encourage each other, and we can reach out. You know, we have such um, a privilege and an honour as women in the church, just to be able to do this. We're all in different seasons and times in our lives, and maybe you've been through a particular situation, and you see somebody else going through it, and you can come alongside them and build them up and bring them along. Or maybe there's somebody who's in the same situation as you. And side by side, you can encourage one another on that journey. And maybe there's somebody out there who needs some encouragement or who needs to reach out. And we would encourage you to do that because we don't always know what is happening. And so if you do need that, reach out to a friend, reach out to a family member. Phone a friend, go to Mass, but don't sit and suffer alone because there's always somebody who can walk with you side by side. So with this in light, um, or in light of this, should I say, uh, we are going to produce a little vlog on the nights that we should have been meeting here in the Slimmer Suite each month. So that's the second Monday night of each month that we're going to release a little vlog. And it's just really to keep us connected and just to remind ourselves of that side-by-side -side theme when we are encouraging each other along. And you know, it's a time when we should be reaching out to other people to you and telling them about Jesus Christ, because that is the best place to be, walking through these next months with Jesus by our side. So ladies, our theme side-by-side, -side. encourage one another, build each other up. And if we do this with God at the helm, we will get through this year and into next year, these unknown times, we will do it together and we will do it side by side. Way back in 2019, no one could have imagined the way our world would change in just a matter of months, weeks and days. The COVID-19 virus shut down our economy, left many people without a means of support and left most of us off to wait it out in our homes. There would be no more. Learning side by side, traveling side by side, working side by side, dining side by side, shopping side by side, exercising side by side, Worshipping side by side, or snuggling grandkids side by side. Our everyday lives were turned upside down, regardless of our age, gender, nationality or religion. No matter whether old or young, rich or poor, 
we all would have to adjust to a new normal. But in a time of uncertainty, fear, seclusion and separation, God was still there, right by our side. Nahum 1 verse 7 reminds us that the Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. He is close to those who trust in him. Often when troubles come, our human solution is to handle things ourselves. But that is not what the Bible advises us to do. Turning to the Lord should be our first response, not our last resort. Philippians 4 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Obviously, some have suffered more than others. Thousands of families have suffered the loss of precious relatives, but the severity of the pandemic has been felt in many ways. For some, the lockdown brought an unexpected period of calm, but many others experienced great turmoil like the rolling waves of a storm-swept sea. Yet, even in the rough times, God gifted us with many blessings. Some of the PW ladies have shared how God encouraged them in a time of uncertainty. During lockdown, I got a little bit overwhelmed with the fact that all of a sudden, four of us were in the house. We were homeschooling, we were working from home, we were never leaving the house. We couldn't go to visit family and friends. And I found Mark's daily vlogs very encouraging and very uplifting. Um, I really enjoyed right through from a Monday um, right through to fun Fridays. I just wish that they had continued on another couple of weeks so that April could have won. I have been encouraged by the song Faithful One. God is described as faithful, unchanging, ageless, rock of peace and Lord of all. And the response says, you are my rock in times of trouble. You lift me up when I fall down, all through the storm, your love is the anchor, my hope is in you alone. What lovely encouraging words. In the immediate lockdown, I love the fact that nobody was coming to your house. And even though I'm a people's person, I like the fact that I could wear what I wanted to wear, do what I wanted to do, without anybody coming up the driveway. I loved also spending time with Rebecca and Abigail and with Mark. And also, even though I was frustrated like many of us were um, in lockdown, just for, for different reasons, I really liked the fact we could get off the hamster wheel of life that many of us have been on and just to take time to rest and to grow in God's word. And that has continued over the past few months for which I have been really thankful. During lockdown, I still had to go out to work as I was an essential worker. I found going out very stressful. So I closed the door behind me in the morning and prayed that God would keep me safe. I found encouragement and comfort in the words of Psalm 46 where it says, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. In verse 10 it says, Be still and know that I am God. Isn't it wonderful to know that God is in control in the midst of uncertainty and that he is with us and is able to deliver us? I was really encouraged during lockdown when we were out for a walk one day and there was um, a stone by the side of the river and someone had just painted it and left it there and on it was the verse Isaiah 43 verse 2 uh, when you pass through deep waters I will be with you um, and that was just a wee moment of encouragement during lockdown it was just God saying with all that's going on in the world at the minute I am here and I am with you. COVID-19 has reminded us that we do not control our own lives, but are completely dependent on the living God who operates this world according to what he knows is best. Though we may not always understand everything God does, we must trust in his care and wisdom. The reality is that we are all facing a global pandemic, that at the present time we can only mitigate until we find a medicine to control it and a vaccine to prevent it. Each and every day, we must intentionally 
fix our thoughts upon God. We have a God who, from the beginning of the Bible to the very end, longs to be with and care for his people. We need not fear, for in Matthew 28 verse 20, the Lord declares, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. God promises to stay by our side in every circumstance of life. Horatio Spafford was a man who experienced great trials and tragedies in his life. He lost his only son to scarlet fever. He lost his wealth in the Chicago fire of 1871 and then lost his four daughters to the sea when the ship they were traveling on collided with another and sank in the Atlantic Ocean. His wife informed him of the sad news in a telegram saying, Saved alone, what shall I do? Horatio immediately set sail for England. As his ship passed over the spot where the shipwreck had happened, Horatio thought about his daughters, and God spoke words of comfort to his heart and a new hope filled his mind. He wrote them down and they became the well-known hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. This old hymn has been reinterpreted and modernised by Stuart Townend. We serve a God who is able to both walk on water and calm the waves. He will stay by our side through this storm if we ask him. With faith in a loving God and with trust in his divine help, we can confidently say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Oh